to Xavier. And who wants to know whose advice I finally took when it came to dealing with this monster Chinese elm? Stay around if you want to see the fun. Cheers. Hi, it's Xavier. I'm back in my uh, new studio outdoors. Um, it's supposed to rain all week, so it's typical. When everything's starting to bud up, I could be stuck inside just because of the rain. Um, very windy, so I've got my um, cat's paw or cat's sock or whatever it is stuffed between my um, my pecs. Don't know whether I've got pecs. I'm a bit old for pecs. A few um, shout outs now. Obviously, I did my um, Chinese elm short quite a while ago actually and I got uh, loads of response so first of all thanks so much and obviously you'll know that I've already taken your advice on my tiger buck ficus and short will have gone up about that but if you haven't seen it there's a link to it now uh, again great advice and I took it so thank you in terms of this Chinese elm there was definitely three main uh, ideas coming forward uh, and the first one just screams out at you and I can see it exactly certainly uh, Candice, Shane, Pallet. James, SNC, you all came up with the same thing, um, either cut or air layer above the first branch. I'm not air layering, so if I do that, it'll be a cut there. And then the aim there was it would then be a beautiful, beautiful tree in its own right, um, sort of semi-cascade style, although it's not gonna hang over the lip of a pot because of how far out the roots come. Um, so just be really, really interesting. Um, I think it was David who suggested about uh, doing it as a uh, as a cascade, and that that would definitely, definitely, definitely have some interesting lines. We then had um, cut off all the dead stuff and recover, which is the tops and everything like that, and dead branches. And uh, that's Kenneth, Simon, Martina, Paul, Jason, and Tony. You know uh, that is also uh, an option. And then the final option uh, was all about utilizing what's there and trying to make some deadwood features out of it. Now I know uh, certainly there was a good point raised that deciduous and deadwood don't naturally go. But then I think we've all been on country drives or bikes or walks and we've all seen those deciduous trees with dead and broken branches and, and all sorts with, with live stuff in between. It's a natural sign of a tree getting old and being affected by the weather. So that option is there as well, and uh, certainly we got that from uh, Radrick, Dr. Tetraman, and I found out the Tetraman is fish food. Green Thumbs, Alex, uh, David, and Philip. Uh, so all in all, there was, there was 18 people who, who made various suggestions. Um, so thanks very much for that. And would it surprise you to believe that uh, in trying to make this decision, I thought, well, I'll count them up and see what we get. Air layering or going for the option on cutting above the first branch, we had six people removing all the dead stuff and letting it recover for a year we had six and if my maths isn't too bad that means everyone who wanted to do deadwood features was six as well so what's the answer what i'm going to do is do it in three phases phase one cut off a lot of the um the branch structure um, until we're left with just stubs or partial stubs uh, and if you imagine a deadwood tree where the branches have started dying, a lot of the stuff gets blown off or destroyed, but there's still a left that's remained, and I may well have a look and see how it looks like when I do that. So that'll be the first thing I'll do. If after uh, a time I look at that and say that really isn't good enough, then I can just chop it straight back and decide whether or not we're going to keep this lower branch here, these lower three. So if I don't like all the dead wood look, I'll cut it here, and then we'll have a look at it and see what we think. Once I've got to that point, and it's a lot smaller, I'm going to pull it out of the sphagnum moss because it definitely needs to get put in some soil. There was one other thing I was seriously considering, and that was actually uh, tanuki um, on the top half. Um, we've got a lot of these whips now, and I was thinking maybe I could do channels and take them all up there. But uh, I've got that idea for something else, so let's just get this sorted, mainly because there's going to be a bit of rain coming, and I really want to get this done. So. You don't need to hear me chat while I decide which branches I'm going to leave. I have a funny feeling the William Tell Overture may well make that much more fun. Let's get to it. Oh, I will stop and say one thing. Um, there was someone who said we could let these 
one or two of these grow out and try and rebuild a top um, it's an option and over a longer time scale probably uh, could be quite successful but when you look it's 35 35 years probably of trunk there versus one year of um, new growth to get anything that was remotely even looking like that would take four or five years I don't think I've got that long seriously <laughs> There we go, that's what's left. Um, and I've realized that uh, on the design I think I would like, I'd have both these branches. Um, I wouldn't keep this one because the plane of the tree, everything would be over that side. So what I'd be trying to do is probably remove, if I, if I had to remove everything, I'd probably do the cut right there and just see what these two produce. The only way that could work is if it was actually further back, otherwise it just really would be just a one half tree. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the the final version, depending on what happens with this, is these two. Which means that branch, that decision can now be made, I think. And for those of you who don't agree, I'm sorry. Okay, that's gone. Now, as I said, obviously I won't be air layering. Um, I'm going to carve away, get bark off this, and, and to be fair, I don't think you want to see me doing that. So I'll come back on that and do that. What we'll do, I like, do you know, certainly, certainly I like, I, I hadn't even seen, if you look at the, the movement you get there, it's brilliant. And there is still definitely going to be an argument that it could even get cut further back. But this is one of those times where when you've got a tree that's got quite a number of um, options, and you're not forced to take the most most drastic one straight away. You can work your way towards it and just see if it's not you know it's not like when you wallpaper a house or you paint a big yellow red wall or whatever and suddenly you go ah what can I do about it? You got options. I'm 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 happy. I want to see how this all looks and uh, and stained up wood hardener and everything. And uh, but I think we need to see what's going on now with that sphagnum moss. So we'll do that. Um, get into a pot. I'm not even worrying about potting angles or anything. I just want to have a look at the roots um, And that then I'll do after it's potted And if you're really enjoying the content, there's gonna be a lot more like this this year Feel free to share this on Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever because I don't have any of those social media sites And apparently that helps the algorithm. So if you want to do me any favors at all share it via your um, your other uh, social media apps, please and if you haven't subscribed and you're liking this, hit subscribe, notifications. Um, my content comes out all sorts of times these days. Um, but anyway, let's get back to the main thing, which we really want to see. Let's have a look and see what's going on this one's engine's room. I think the main thing I want to check here is that um, after watching a lot of Peter Chan's stuff, he was absolutely adamant about the healing properties of sphagnum. And I've now noticed a lot more people are just naturally, I think, Adam from Notion Bonsai almost naturally mixes sphagnum moss into the, the pot and compound um, because of the restorative and uh, antiseptic uh, uses it has. So let's see what it looks like in there now after six months in sphagnum. Oh, and if you're interested, the carnage bucket, I think, I think that will make great kindling for uh, bonfire night. Don't you? Okay, in the space of five minutes, the clouds have just thrown themselves over, so we've got to be quick. Not tied down. Uh, well, of course it's not tied down, it's in sphagnum moss. If I shouldn't even need to do that, I wouldn't have thought, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now the sphagnum I will be retaining. And then there's a bit of old dead soil there. That's an interesting phrase, there's a bit of dead soil. I suppose we could have inert soil, but is it dead soil? What do you think? Comments down below. This is turning into an absolute stalker of an episode, isn't it? Anyone recognise that, Matt? That's my 
bobcat uh, bobcat root rate let's see just how bad this is in the end i'm hoping that we've actually just got we don't need loads of roots we've obviously got some roots because we've got green there now i think this will definitely be a case of washing it out um, i really really want to get to uh to grips with what the root structure because this is probably it's almost a complete it's a restyle on a tree completely reducing the style so i can probably use this opportunity yeah there's a lot of roots that are just breaking in my in my root hook this is so good if you haven't got one go onto his website order them he's, he's not trying to make big money on them but if you're in america certainly it's got to be worth your money it's actually really really good to be honest really happy really happy with this root hook okay well i can see i've got a lot of decent roots under there okay i think what we'll do is we'll clean this away for a bit let's put this in a resting place certainly that i can see that that being the front there look at that root base there Anyway, now we go to the next star of carpentry. Uh, and now we get to use uh, Tony of Tony's Bonsai and his incredible uh, chopsticks. And I noticed that uh, Ryan Neal has just put out one about how to make them. I wonder if you got inspiration from you, Tony. Wouldn't surprise me. Okay. So, let's say, I'm gonna get most of the muck off and then I'm gonna run it under some water. And we want to, in this instance, get rid of everything. Absolutely everything under it. Definitely some lovely, healthy structure under there. Um, obviously, once it gets wet, you won't see it as well. So I'll keep doing that. And we'll come back to you when it's done. We'll find a pot to put it in. All washed out, nowhere to go. Um, some nice, healthy roots there. There's a mat under there. I'm going to remove everything that's coming from the bottom anything that looks a bit out of place but I actually quite like how those roots have developed so I'm not going to be taking too much off there to be honest I'm going to bring back here it's a nice big gangly one but I don't want the pot that big so I'm going to bring it back to where we've got some nice roots junctions coming from it don't want dead ones coming out these ones from the top don't want so I get a chance to remove some of this stuff This one crossing, so we don't want that one. Something up there, don't want that. Something up there. Oh, still loads of mud in there. It's great big clump up here see I'm gonna to need to clean that out a bit better we've got I think we've got roots underneath it so we'll get rid of that one now initially I will cover that right over so all these roots should be covered in soil got mud on my glasses now always easy and I say this is the, probably the well this is this is the first time this has had a, a a really strong root prune that's for sure so it's the ideal time to try and remedy any obvious defects we've got that one's going over the top so we actually don't need that one no that one All right, that's as far as I'm gonna go with the roots. Um, I think you can see substantially smaller. I'll give them another rinse, get that mud out, and then we're gonna put that in a nice, nice little pot for recovery. Yeah. And I think when the sun's out, what I'll do, see, I'm not gonna be able to go down and do that with it. 
because that, that's a very firm root structure. Um, might just, do I get rid of that? It's coming off that. Do you know what? Let's get rid of that. Just a nice opportunity to get rid of that crosser. Okay. I just see the front being in there somewhere, taking advantage of all that. And then all this just dead. Interesting. Okay, I'll give that a rinse. Well, gone for this pot. I've got a load of um, finely mulched um, pine bark at the bottom. My usual uh, potting mix. It's got a lot more um, kitty friend in it this time. I want it to be a very, very uh, easy draining. So I am going to um, chop up some fine sphagnum moss. Just because it does, it has such a great result on stuff. So I'm just going to sprinkle that around where I want the main roots to be, or just look at that. Does that make sense? I'm just going to sprinkle that in there anyway. Right. Uh, I'm not really going for potting angles, to be honest. So let's just sit it in. And as I say, I'm actually going to be covering it right over. The only amazing thing is just how much soil I end up using on one tree. No, it's not tied in. Um, and I'm not bothered about that. I'll put a couple of rocks in there. Okay, well, I'll give it a spin in a minute. Um, just clean this lot up. Okay, well, hopefully that was quite fun. Um, and I know some of you are probably saying, oh, can we get on and do the, uh, the dead wood carving and that? And the reason why I'm not is one, let's see if this thing actually thrives as a result of all that work. So it'd be a waste of time doing all the work on the, uh, the dead wood. But to be honest, I wanna wait until summer for that because um, I haven't fully decided where I'm going with it. So it could well be that next time you see it, I've removed it. We'll give it a spin. Um, I have no idea what the front would look like. Um, this is far too deep to be able to give you a, a, a proper impression of it. Um, but yeah. I like both branches, I'll be honest. I do like both branches, but it could well be that because of the nature, mind you, I don't know, it just gives it a, a certain three dimensions about it. If you just have the single branch, the single branch goes along the plane of that. But I don't know. I think that'll be the, uh, one of the next questions later on is front. I can't, I had a look, I can't do anything about the planting angle. That, the base of that root is pretty well uh, rock solid now. So anyway, um, I'm just going to let that, that run a bit, gain some vigour and health. And uh, yeah, interesting project, interesting project. I'll just say again, thanks very much for all the comments and help. Um, I have got another tree I'm gonna ask you about after this one, and hopefully you'll be inspired to continue your own bonsai journeys, because mine is certainly a long way to go. Uh, I'll say with, oh my God, I can't believe it. We've got blue sky suddenly, typical. It's been cloudy all this last hour or so. I'm going to say thanks very much for taking time to watch. Wish you all the best. Happy bonsaiing. God bless. Cheers.